Hi everybody, in the last episode we learned a bunch of new programming concepts and we looked at an already built bot that knows how to play rock, paper, scissors. And I promised you that this time we will build another bot completely from scratch and this bot will find out the meaning of your name, my name or any other name. This will be a follow-along video, so to get the most out of it, I strongly suggest you install the UiPath Studio and try to recreate what I will be building during the video. UiPath Studio has a free community edition and I have already created a video on how to create a free account and install Studio on your own computer. So let's start with creating a new project. We choose process under new project and we give it a name. We can call it the meaning of names, we can copy paste this for the description as well, and this is where it will save the files on our computers. So the moment I create this, then it will create some folders on uh, this C documents UiPath with the name, the meaning of names, and here we have some folders, some files, and the most important file is the .xaml one which basically will hold the code corresponding to the program we are developing. So the first thing we would want to do is find out the name for which we have to get the meaning of. We can open the main workflow and here's our workspace. We have on the left hand side here our project files and we have a tab for activities. And here we can search for an activity called input dialog. We can just type in input and we get here different activities which contain the word input. We basically need this one. So we can just click it, drag and drop it on our workspace here. And it has brought in the activity. This is the activity. We can maximize and minimize. And it has some properties. So each activity has a set of properties. This input dialog is basically a prompt that will be shown to us when we are running this bot. And that window that will be showed has a title. We can maintain here for the title something like the meaning of your name. And please notice that I am writing all texts in quotation marks just for the program to understand that this is a custom text and has no other special meaning. And we have an input label. This will be actually the question we want to ask. So we can say here quotation marks and then uh, what is your name? question mark and then for input type we can keep text box because we're just expecting a word here and no multiple choice and now the program needs to remember this value later on so it needs to save it in something called a variable it's like you are bad with names like I am so every time I meet somebody new I want to write down his or her name to check it later and remember it the computer needs to do the same so to store the entered name into a variable, we need to create a variable first. We can press Ctrl plus K, then we get the message set var from variable, and we can now type a variable name. Uh, we can call it str underscore name. str is to later recognize that uh, this stores a short text, and name because it actually stores the input name we are interested in. So it's very helpful to name our variables in such a way that later on or through the code we will very quickly identify and understand what they are doing. So we can hit enter and to double check we can open the variables tab and we see we have here one variable called str name and its type is string, so text basically. All right, now that we have the name we need to go on the internet and search for its meaning. So we have to open a browser. We can go again to the activities panel and search for the open browser activity. Here it is. We can drag and drop it here on the plus. It will just 
add the next activity after this one. They are all linked together. And now we have to enter the address of the website that will give us the meaning of the name. There are many websites. I've chosen the familyeducation.com baby names website. So we can just copy paste this here and hit enter. This tells UiPath that we want to open this browser page. And this activity creates a kind of container under it where we can enter the rest of the activities related to this web page. And we notice we have an error here because we forgot to add the quotation marks I was just mentioning before. So we can do it now. Quotation marks here and quotation marks at the end. Hit enter and the error is going away. It's good practice to close the windows we are opening with our bots to leave a clean environment when we are done. So before we forget it, let's make sure we are closing the browser window at the end. And this can be done with the close application activity. You can search for it here. And here it is. We can drag and drop it after the open browser activity. And now we have to tell it which application it has to close. So we can just click the indicate on screen and then click maybe the X button of the Internet Explorer browser. And here it is. This should then close our browser at the end when we are done. Okay, now let's see what we should do inside the browser window. We first have to enter the name that we have saved in the previous activity and we can use a type into activity for this. We take the type in, the keyboard type into, not the CV type into, that is a bit different. So we can drag and drop this here inside the do container of the open browser. We drop it here. And now we have to indicate on which screen or which box we should click. And for that, let me just copy here the address, go inside the browser, paste the address here and open the page. So this is the page and we have here at the bottom names and meanings. We have a text box here and a search button. So we'd have to enter our name here in this text box and then click the search button to get its meaning. So we need to type into here, we select this box. And then for the text to be quoted, we can put here directly the variable name where the input name is stored. So we can type str and then underscore name. So this basically will type into any value that is stored in the previous step in this variable. Now we need to click the search button. So we can go also in the activities panel. We can search for click. And again, don't take the CV click, but take the mouse click. We can drag and drop it after the type in tool. And we click on indicate element inside browser and we select the search button. So this will just click on the button after it has entered the name. And that will take us to the next page. Let's do it also manually. We close this other tab. Okay, we actually didn't enter a name, so we can um, do it again. Let's put in my name. Gabriel, click on search. And then we have here the meaning of Gabriel and we have this text that we can then save or capture and show to the user. So how to do that? In this last step, we have to use an activity that will get a text and it's called just like that, get text. All right, we can drag and drop it after the click. And now we have to indicate on screen where the text is. You can select this one over here. And here in the properties panel, we have to enter for the output value, another variable that will store the text that um, would be found on the web page. And for that, just like we did in the first step for um, saving the input name, we can do the same and click here on value, then type Control K. We get the set var label in front. That means that we have been successful. And then we can write here variable name. We can say str 
underscore meaning and enter. And what it does, it creates here a second variable called str meaning, also of type string. So right now we will have in this str meaning the value or the meaning of the name. And what we have to do is display it back to the user. And we can do it in different ways. Right now, just to see how it's working, we can use a log message activity. We can drag and drop it here. For the log level, we can choose info. And for the message, we can just type in here the variable which contains the meaning. And that's pretty much it. We can try it out, see what's happening. We can close the browser window first, close all the browsers. And now we can click on this arrow under debug file and we can choose this run file option. So now we are being asked of our name. I can type in here Gabriel. It opens the browser page, it enters Gabriel, clicks on search and now gets the result. And we have an error actually for closing the application. It says that it cannot click on close. Um, if that happens, we can try maybe to re-indicate on screen what is the right window. Actually, I was on a different window when uh, I created this, this um, close activity. So we should do it now again. I indicate disks here and that should be fine. We can close the browser window and try one more time. We input the name. Okay. And there it is. So the program has finished running and we have here the log file. It tells us that the program called Ming of Names has started its execution. It started running. And then we have here the log message with the meaning. In my case, for Gabriel, the Hebrew meaning is God is my strength. And then the program has finished running. All right, we can now play with more names. You probably have tried already with yours. So let's run again. What's happening if we enter a name not known to the website or we just misspell or mistype our name? we might get a different result. So I will just mistype mine and say, okay, let's see what's happening. So I get a message here, no matches for J-B-R-E-L and I don't have any more that section with the meaning of my name. So what will happen now in a few seconds, the bot will keep trying to find that section with the meaning of the name. It doesn't find it because the website doesn't know the meaning of this misspelled name. And then the bot will fail with an error again. It just did. It's telling us that it didn't find that get text section that we are looking for. So what can we do in this case? We want to give the user a special message when this is happening and don't let the bot fail with an error. But first we must help the computer understand when this is happening and when not. We have to check if this specific text, no matches for and name, is found or shown on the web page. So for that, we can use an element exists activity. So we have it right here and we can just drag and drop it maybe before getting the text. So after the click and we indicate on the browser this section here with no matches for and then the name. Okay, and for the properties of this activity, we have also an output exists. And here we are expected, or we can tell the program where to save the result. Either it has found this element or not. So we have only two options, yes or no. And in this case, we will not use anymore a string variable, which can contain any text, but we will use something called the Boolean variable. So we also click Control K to create a new variable on the spot. And this one we can call bool underscore name not found. We can hit an enter and we double check in the variables tab. We have our variable here and its type is boolean. So it's correct, it's not a string anymore. 
So now the computer will know if that text is showing up or not, and it will save the result in this bool variable. Okay, now we know if this no matches message is displayed or not. So we have to show different messages for the two cases. For this, we can use an if activity. We can search for it here. We drag and drop it after the element exists activity. And it has a condition. For the condition, we can put the name of the Boolean variable. So bool underscore name not found. And if the value of this variable is true, so if that text appears on the web page, then the code under this section then is showing. If not, and if you don't have else here, you can either show or hide else. This depends on the version of UFS Studio you have. But if this is true, this section of the code is happening under then. If it is false, then the section under else is going to happen. And if the name is not found, we just want to tell the user that, that it didn't find the meaning. So we can also use the log message activity. We can drag and drop it here. We we'll say info and we say name not found. And if it did find a name, we do what we did before. Basically, what we have here, getting the meaning and then showing it to the user. So we can just now drag and drop it and we execute this only in the else section and also this message. You can drag and drop it here. Sometimes drag and dropping a second one will not work. Hold on, it did. So we have to just be careful um, where we drag and drop it. And that's it pretty much. We can make it a bit smaller to see it well. So we are getting the name from the keyboard, from the user. We are opening the browser. We are entering the name, clicking on search, checking if we have this basically error message, no match. And if we get it, we say, sorry, no name found. If we don't get it, if we get a meaning, then we get the text on the web page for the meaning and we display it to the user. And then we close the application. So I'll close the browser window again and let's try to run it again. And this time I will run it with my misspelled name again and see if it runs successfully without crashing and just showing the message that no name was found. So we get no matches for Gabriel. So let's edit the selector. And to get it more stable, we can use here meaning and then family education because this word is found both when a meaning of the name is on the website and when it is not. So let's try to use this title here and write again. I can write it for my middle name, for example. And there it is. The program has finished running and we get a message that the meaning is in Greek, God is gracious. I hope you are able to follow along. If not, just leave a comment below with your email address and I will send you the code. I would very much appreciate if you shared with me how you liked or disliked this video because it will help me get better at this and hopefully create better ones next time. If you liked it, please hit the like button and this will tell YouTube that this video is worth showing to others as well. And spread the word among your friends about what you are learning here. Stay curious and see you next time.